people in power often think that this is how and uh, this is where it's a palace of our former president, decisions are made. And usually, this is the case. People in power have a number of reasons to think so. First of all, help of police that can get rid of noisy protesters. Then also mindful judges that can ensure that those protesters will not disturb you for a long time. And this is exactly what happened with our Ukrainian film director, Oleg Sensov, who stood up against Russian occupation of Crimea and then was imprisoned for 20 years in eastern Siberia, thousands of kilometers away from his home. And finally, might almighty politicians. And uh, I'd like to show you how they used to be, how they used to vote in my parliament, even without having the majority, but enjoying total impunity. But you know, unfortunately, it's not only people in power, but also people in general think that this is how decisions are made, until they realize that it's not. And the real power belongs to them. This is exactly what happened in 2013, when Ukrainian people went into the streets to protest against authoritarian President Yanukovych, who tried to sold our European future at a price of $2 billion from Russian President Putin. At that point, people realized that it's their time to make the decisions. European Union leaders and Ukraine have failed to sign an historic free trade deal after a last-minute U-turn from Kiev. They said that they were working in this direction. What is your question for Ukraine? It became clear that something is going to happen here. Why are хотели на корне сразу это все поломать, задавить, сразу, чтобы даже никому повадно не было. Но реакция оказалась обратная. There were different people in the streets, doctors, engineers, teachers, activists, journalists. There were grandparents, there were youth, there were people from the east, from the west, from the all corners of my country. But there was one identity that all of a sudden we realized about ourselves and also which united us. And that identity was a responsible citizenship. We were responsible citizens. And I had a chance to learn what does it mean earlier, yet in 2004. At that point, I was working as a TV journalist. I was making my first steps. I was a student. I was working for the fifth TV channel, which was the only TV channel in Ukraine that uh, managed to resist total censorship in the country. And it turned out that my word mattered, that it could make difference while the results of the presidential elections were brutally falsified. So there was no surprise that from the first day of Euromaidan, of this revolution, I was there in the street. And this revolution was break up with corrupt politics in Ukraine. This revolution was also 
broke up the dominance of the post-Soviet gravity force in the region that was imposed by Russian regime, not only in Ukraine, but also in the neighboring countries, like Georgia, with occupied Ossetia and Abkhazia, like in Moldova, with occupied Transnistria. Our new generation just decided that we don't want to be someone's sphere of legitimate interest. This revolution was also a conscious choice of the European better future. In two words, it was a choice of freedom. My organization at that point moderated a Facebook page called Euromaidan, the biggest in the history of Ukraine and probably the biggest in the history of the whole region. Every single day we reached up to four million people's, people uh, a day. And I remember one story. When we found out that one man was wounded by police with a bullet in his lung. And I couldn't believe it, because it was a peaceful protest at that point, and we are European, peaceful country, just in the heart of Europe. But we found the doctors, we called them, and they proved us that the man is dying, and he's in the hospital, badly needs a certain type of blood. So, we posted these 194 symbols on our Facebook page, and one hour later, I read the news that there were 200 people lining up to give him their blood to become donors to a person they even didn't know. I was, and I am, so much inspired by Ukrainians. And it makes me particularly humble to stay here at the stage in front of you, because I believe that there are thousands of stories of my fellow Ukrainians that deserve to be told much more than mine. Unfortunately, revolutions don't come without a price. It was considered by neighboring authoritarian regime in Russia as a deadly democratic virus, as a personal threat to Mr. Putin, because Ukrainian success, Ukrainian democracy, will automatically threaten Russian regime. That is why as soon as we threw out our corrupt president out of the country, we saw Russian soldiers on our borders. Putin annexed Crimea, and he occupied Donbass, part in the eastern part of my, of my country. In fact, Putin started the war, and hybrid war is a big part of it, but the real war is also underestimated. We have 10,000 10, people killed, we have 20,000 wounded, we have 2 million people internally displaced people, we have 250,000 Crimean Tatars that live through all kinds of repressions, religion, economic, political, social, cultural. They are in danger to be a Crimean Tatar is in danger itself. They don't have the right for their motherland again. They don't have the right for their identity. Ukraine is looking for solutions. Ukraine is looking for justice. But when we went to the international courts, it turned out that Russia does not acknowledge, does not recognize the jurisdictions of most of them, including International Criminal Court. Then international organizations, they could be helpful, but they turn out to be incapable to deal with the challenges we face in Ukraine. Because many of them were basically hijacked by the veto right of Russia at United Nations General Assembly, Security Council, OSCE, Council of Europe, you name it. Finally, you know, it seemed that fifth article of NATO statute, which says if one is attacked, everyone is attacked, was the only preventive and reliable authority from Russian aggression for its members. But what about poisoning of the British citizens in Salisbury? Is it an aggression? What about meddling in elections around the world? In US, in France, in Germany, in Netherlands, in Catalonia, you name it. What about massive disinformation campaign? What about cyber attacks? Disinformation campaign including Western countries, those that enjoy freedom of speech. But freedom of speech 
It's not only when you are free to say what you want, it's also when people are free to find the truth. I'm trying to say that it's not only about Putin being bad, it's also about us, reluctant to recognize that every single day shellings in my country, in the East, in Donbass, it's also part of this global battle for the Western and liberal and democratic values. Putin is trying to impose on us this define our reality as post-truth, post-West, post-order. Is he successful? I don't know the answer to this question, but I definitely know that I don't want to leave it rhetorical. Four years, during these four years, last four years, Ukraine did a great progress. We started to change our post-Soviet DNA. We lived through these positive mutations, if you want. We started to build anti-corruption institutions, started to uh, bring more transparency to our political finances. We are making all kinds of reforms. We are we even conducted the first LGBT pride in the center of my capital. I was the first politician who uh, publicly took part in it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to say that helping Ukraine at the moment means helping to transform the whole post-Soviet area. It's an investment in demo democracy and insecurity in the whole post-Soviet world. And our transformation will be the model of the transformation for Belarus, for Armenia, for Kazakhstan, for Azerbaijan, and ultimately Russia. This is how I would like international community look at us now. You know, four years ago, I was an activist, this is the day I was nominated to be a parliamentarian. Now I'm a member of parliament. And being from this side of the barricades, I've learned my lesson. I know that freedom of speech, it's not about revolutions. Freedom is also not about throwing out your corrupt and authoritarian presidents. Freedom is a daily exercise. It's a daily choice of which side you are taking. And if you are neutral in the situation of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. Thank you.